Mother Russia. Corrupt oligarchs, KGB assassinations, doped athletes, Russian mafia wading waist deep in money across a roped off red square. Human organ trafficking, puppy mills in Florida that are really Russian mob fronts. There's a lot not to like. But don't blame the Russians for disrupting our elections, because we do it too, and in some of the same places, like Ukraine. Instead, blame the traitorous American greedheads, hoping to grease themselves a path into the Global Masters of the Universe Club. Hi, I'm Daniel Hopsigrin. Welcome to The Current Unpleasantness. As we slowly gear up to move into the Watergate televised hearing phase of the Russiagate scandal, Who's the one Russian oligarch whose name you should know? The answer to that question is the subject of today's episode of Know Your Russian Mobsters. The Russian oligarch whose name you need to know is Oleg Deripaska. Oleg Deripaska is the Russian Oliver North. He's very much a player in Russiagate. The millions he paid out to Paul Manafort may turn out to be the least of it. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position. We'll touch on Oleg's history as the Russian gangster, ruthless enough to be the last man standing at the end of what Russians call the Aluminum Wars. Then fast forward to the scandal he's in the middle of right now. He stepped into a honeypot. Even if we're interacting with men who are famous actors, lawmakers, oligarchs, scientists, very few of these men, when they interact with a woman, discuss highbrow topics with them. If you want to seduce a man like that, he needs to be hooked by his basic sexual instinct. Could someone have just done to Oleg Deripaska what the Russians did to Donald Trump? Oleg Deripaska and Donald Trump will go down as historical figures in the biggest story of our time, the globalization of organized crime. Russia is still Russia, and a honeypot is just a honeypot. In the world of espionage, that's a code for a woman who seduces a man to pump secrets out of him, or for compromise, which is what the Russians call blackmail. There's nothing new under the sun, even in the spy biz. Moscow in 2010, Berlin in the 1950s. Some things, like human nature, never change. That I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. As a piece of trade craft, what happened to Trump is all that different than what servicemen were being warned about in the early days of the Cold War. I have two stories about Oleg Deripaska. One is about who he is. The other is about the strange circumstances under which he first crossed my radar back in 2008. When I first wrote about him, few knew his name, other than a Republican lobbyist taking his money to get him a visa so he could enter the U.S. As it turns out, the FBI wasn't having it. And that's our first story. The history of the Russian oligarch most deeply implicated in Russiagate is clouded in mystery. He has been called Russia's uber-oligarch. The New York Times identifies him as a former nuclear physicist. He wrested control of the Russian aluminum industry from a nether world of organized crime figures, reports the Times. There's even a profile of him in the Toronto Globe and Mail, which reports that Oleg is really a philanthropist who's just shy about publicizing his numerous charities. So who is Oleg Deripaska? Whatever the answer, one thing's for certain. For a gangster, he sure gets great press. In the criminal history of planet Earth, aluminum is the biggest racket ever run by a single organized crime family. Ever heard of the great patriotic aluminum wars? That's what they called them in Russia. There were three, and bloody affairs they were, too. Ownership of Russia's most valuable assets was up for grabs in the 1990s. Protection rackets were run by organized crime, former KGB agents, and cadres of special forces troops. Russia's mineral wealth was divided on the factory floors in a series of violent and bloody standoffs. As Deripaska made his way up, he created a powerful security service of his own, 
and cemented his position in Russia's ruling elite by marrying into Boris Yeltsin's family in the early 2000s. When Deripaska in 2000 moved to gain control over Russia's aluminum output, the bosses of two huge aluminum smelters opted to sell their stakes to him. It was either that or go to prison. Grabbing hold of a dominant global position in a strategic metal like aluminum made Oleg Deripaska and the people he fronts for true masters of the universe. Because of his vice-like grip on the industry, Deripaska is called the Aluminum King and enjoys the reputation as the hard man of the infamously ruthless metal industry. Want to see the globalization of organized crime in action? Today you can. In Thailand, this story was so hot that CNN sent two reporters. She promotes herself endlessly on social media as Nastia Ribka. A kind of self-styled Russian sex guru. She describes herself as a seductress, a relentlessly self-promoting 21-year-old named Anastasia Vashukevich. Nastya is a party girl and professional escort from Belarus who flew too close to the sun and is now paying the price. She brags of liaisons with billionaires, and one billionaire in particular. I just came out of this detention center where I spoke with Anastasia Vashukevich. She says that she witnessed meetings between the Russian billionaire Oleg Deripaska and at least three Americans who she claims they discussed plans to affect the U.S. election. First to alert the world to Oleg Deripaska's indiscretion is the only real hero in this story. We salute him. He's Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny, who posted a video on YouTube just a few weeks before Putin's expected re-election, filled with photographs Nastya took on the yacht. Russia's main opposition leader seized on the images as evidence of official corruption, also suggesting the two men, who can be heard discussing U.S.-Russia relations, may have served as a link between the Kremlin and the Trump campaign. There were big headlines in Russia. Russian businessman Deripaska takes legal action due to personal life materials posting in social media. Deripaska accused her of illegally disseminating information about his private life. And he was able to get the Russian government to intimidate Google into taking down, in Russia, the YouTube news clips of Nastya and Oleg canoodling on his yacht. In a statement to CNN, his spokesperson said he is suing Ribka and her business partner because they, quote, maliciously made his private photos and personal information public. Didi Pasca denies meddling in the U.S. election and says Vashukevich was never his mistress. A spokesman writing, this is clearly an attempt by Anastasia Vashukevich to politicize the accusations of the Thai police. While awaiting her revelations about Deripaska's discussion of the American election, Puri and interest will have to do... Could a social media obsessed escort from Belarus hold the key needed to wake up from the degrading nightmare of Donald Trump's presidency? Or is that just a lazy wish fulfillment plot from an old B-movie? In any event, the Trump-Russia story gets even weirder because someone found footage showing Anastya demonstrating in Moscow for the release of, are you ready for this? Harvey Weinstein. I don't imagine she did it on a whim. The question is, who sent her out there? Next time on The Current Unpleasantness, meet the home team.